Welcome back to the Big Idea to Bestseller podcast. We got somebody who I'm excited about um, to, to bring to you guys today because not only did she write an incredible, incredible book, but she's got the energy, she's got a cool backstory, and she's a, a perfect person who, when you have an idea and you enlist the right support, you can not only create one book, but you can create two books very quickly, and we're going to walk through all that. So uh, please welcome the best-selling author of the book, Teacher Variants, Jen Mott, to the stage. That's right. Thank you. Hi, Jake. Jen, I am pumped, okay? I am pumped. I, I want to know, for the people who, who maybe aren't familiar with you, okay, let's give a little backstory into why you decided to write the book, Teacher Variants, and what it's all about. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, and I am excited to share more. I did this work in actually 2020. So I'm in education and I was working on my doctorate in educational leadership, leadership studies, and I chose the topic of teacher perseverance. And I chose to really focus on why teachers stay in a world that I felt was yelling about teachers leaving and teacher attrition and teacher burnout, which I agree is real. I really wanted to focus on the why teachers are staying and I really am the eternal optimist. So I wanted to see if there were themes we could capture. So my research during 2020 of all times found four common themes, and I published it in December of 2020, celebrated uh, with my close family and friends, because obviously it was a small celebration time of life, and I was thrilled that I had done that. And then ultimately, I realized not a lot of people like to read academic papers, <laughs> And I just sat on the fact that I had done it. And so I was satisfied. I was grateful and proud of myself for persisting and doing that work. And then since 2020 has happened, we all know that the world around education has only gotten louder about um, teachers staying. And also just like employee retention in general has become a larger conversation in the post-COVID world. And here I was sitting on this research that I had already conducted and I had already done. I had found four themes that keep people going and that motivate employees to stay, specifically teachers, but there's universal takeaways. And I just kept thinking, I have a book. Like I am I want to like rebrand this work and make it a book. And I loved the research part in the sense of like interviewing and hearing people's stories, but I didn't love the charts and graphs and data and all like the academic speak of not being able to be approachable. I just felt like I wanted to tell a story. And so I started Googling over the last three and a half years at that point, like a year ago, really this time last year, tw spring 2023, I just every once in a while would Google like how to write a book. And <laughs> I would go down all the rabbit holes of this is how you do it. And then the next thing I would read was this is how you do it. And it was completely opposite. And I was just like, it was very much the analysis paralysis and not knowing where to start, but feeling like I wanted to contribute in a book form rather than an academic paper form to the conversation in a positive, optimistic way that says, this is the work I found. I've already done the research. I just needed to rewrite it. And thankfully, Thanks to a sponsored ad, I found you and I am really grateful when social media works for good. And I feel like so proud that I get to share that June of 2023 was when I put the stake in the ground and I signed on to work with you. And I was like, I am doing this. I started saying it out loud. And here I am. It's April. But as of March 2023, I have an actual book out. And being able to have this in my hands and share this with others in less than one year was wild to me. So it definitely spoke to the process, to my own just passion and motivation for seeing it through, but also to the way that you and your team work to develop us as authors and really help us understand the process and just a clear cut way to follow. Yeah, it, it, it's been an amazing journey. You know, it's 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 crazy that not even a year has fully gone by and you've been able to do so much with this. And like you said, I, I do think there's a, a lot that is kudos to you, right? You had this idea, you knew you had this message. And, and that was one of the biggest things that I saw is it was so important for you to get this work out there in a more easily digestible way to the masses. And when you have a strong reason, it makes the, the work part of it much more tolerable, much more doable because you know that the other side, there's, there's hope, right? And so I, I want to, I want to know a little bit about this. You mentioned that you were researching a ton. Okay. I don't even know if I've ever asked this. 
but you're, you're researching a ton. I think when people are looking to write a book or pick anything that they want to get support with and they're looking to invest their hard-earned dollars and you're researching it, you're using Google, you're seeing this person, this person, this person, then you come across one of our sponsored ads which awesome to know ads work, but <laughs> would love to know like what made you decide to work with us at Big Idea to Best Seller uh, compared to all the other ads, all the other companies that have written blogs about this. What, what was it for you that helped you know that we would be the right fit for you? Well, I, I'm really happy to share because I do believe in it now that I'm, you know, truly living proof of how it works. And I've also obviously gotten connected with a whole community of authors that you've created and help support as well. Um, I, you are not my first phone call, right? Like I had already gone down the road of investigating groups and organizations that could help because I felt like I really was onto something. And I just felt like I, I love being coached. I love learning. I love being mentored. And of course, there's a million resources out there, but I just needed one person to just say, do it this way. And I just wanted to trust that person. And really, when I talked to you, I mean, you were my first phone call with your group, and I felt an immediate connection to the enthusiasm. I felt like you were genuine. One thing I appreciated was I I didn't feel, you know, whether it was true or not, because I, I believe you, I think you're a really genuine person, but I didn't feel like it was just another sales call for you. I felt like... Um, and and the fact that I talked to you, right? Sometimes you see the brand or you see the name and then you see the person and then you get a call with some other random person. And I was really struck, honestly, that it was it was you. It was the person that I was seeing on Instagram and stuff and who had written the books, who had done the work. And yeah. so I really was impressed by our phone call. I felt like you asked genuine follow-up questions, like you were actually interested in my journey, my story, what I had already previous, previously done to get there. And so, um, and then the energy is unbeatable. <laughs> I, I felt like we were aligned in what we bring because I'm always all about the excitement and the enthusiasm. And I felt matched with you in that. And I was like, okay, you, you're, you know, so I just loved the excitement beyond it rather than just, this is another call and another sales that I need to make. And yeah. I, I just felt like there was real um, personalization there. And so I, and now being on the other side, I can say that it, it, felt real the whole time. And I really am grateful for that. Thank you for saying that. And, you know, I think, again, it's, you did the work, right? We, we could give you the process. We could, we could give you everything you could ever imagine. But if you're not willing to do the work, the book's not going to happen, right? And so you did all that. And I, I would love to know, okay, because we've had several people now who come in, they, they have a doctorate of some capacity, they have a secondary degree, they've done some research, some papers, and, and writing a book is different, right? What for you, like, I'd love to know what about the, what made the book process easier for you um, and something that you were excited about doing versus feeling like, oh gosh, I have to do another thing to, to check off an item, right? Because you you had fun throughout this process and it's not to say you it wasn't hard at times, but you, you, you made this a really fun process. Um, and so I'd love to know for you, what was it about the process related to the book writing um, that made it so enjoyable or if there were any moments that that really stood out to you while you were putting this all together? So it's a great question. First and foremost, I would say I was really invested in the message. Like I genuinely believed in, I, I was sitting on the work for three and a half years, just thinking like, I'm over here with the answers. Like I felt like I really had answers to share with people. And I just didn't know how to share those in a tangible way that was more approachable. So really like genuinely believing in the message and what I had to offer people felt stronger. You know how some people have an idea, but then it just fizzles like, oh, one day to me, that idea just only got stronger. And so that felt real to me. And I felt a level of urgency to share the message because of how much stronger the narrative got in a negative way around teachers. Mm -hmm. And I really mm -hmm. wanted to share the positive spin of validating their work and cheering them on and being their motivator. I felt like really called to do that. So that's first and foremost is I felt this level of like urgency and I believe what I have to say matters and I want it to matter for others. So that was first. And then as far as the actual process, one of the things I loved, cause I'm just the, like, I just, am, I love being a student and I love learning. And I loved the way you all, your team has it set up as modules and just like a checklist. And it felt very satisfying to just be like, 
And for me, because I had already written the work and done the dissertation, I got to like skip some parts early on where I was like, oh, that was easy. I've already done that. And that was really um, gratifying that like helped kind of kickstart things quickly of like, oh my gosh, I'm actually further along than I thought. And, and then as you follow those modules and you could literally tick off the checklist, all of a sudden at the end, it's a book. Like, it's just like, it's really, you've done, you've made the process so foolproof and it's really brilliant because I, I've told many people now about you and what you have to offer. And I love that you serve all industries, right? Many people serve their niche or their industry, but you serve all industries. Anyone who wants to be a, um, you know, thought leader or share their idea with others, it can be any industry, but you really have a great process that allows people to just check things, check yeah. through things. And then you have something to really prove at the end to be like, I did it. It's right here. This is it. And that was really impressive. Yeah. Talk to me about this, right? You, you talk about, you, you know, I have the answer. I have the answer. I have the answer. And, and one of the things that a lot of people I think struggle with is they're really good at what they do. Right. I think a lot of people are really talented. A lot of a lot of coaches are really talented. I mean, of course, there are people that are terrible at what they do. But I think I think the problem for a lot of people is not that the level of skill set or the results that they can get is the challenge. It's about the fact that they're the best kept secret. Right. And no matter how good you are, if nobody has a chance to see how good you are or hear about how good you are, then you could be the greatest in the world, but be the, the poorest person or the person with no business. And you had this feeling of like, this matters to me and I want it to matter for others. And you weren't going to allow that, you were gonna allow yourself to be keep being the best kept secret. So talk to me about the, the, the answers that you have, right? The book Teacher Verence, it's, it's really all about, you know, doing everything that, that you talk about in this book. So what are those four key pillars that, that you really drive home in the book so that we can learn, uh, whether we're educators, employees, or, or people, you know, that work with those types of people, what, what can we take away from that? Yeah, so um, thank you for asking, uh, because I love sharing this part. So first, you and I both know I struggled with the name Teacher Verence because I didn't want it. I well, my industry is certainly education, and teachers were the part of the study that mattered the most. I also wanted to make it clear that there are universal takeaways for anyone leading their organization on employee retention. But I appreciate your encouragement to stick with Teacher Verence because I am now way more sold on that being on the back end. But really, for anyone looking to capture like why their employees stay, I found four common themes, and they were higher calling. So the idea of like groundedness and purpose, and whether it's spiritual, faith-based or anything of like, this was what I was meant to do. This is my calling. Another reason could be community. And so it's that community that's built either virtually now or um, in person of for teachers. It's the hallway or the department or the community of the school district that they serve. They live there. Their kids go there. They went there. Their family, you know, their parents went there, whatever it is. So some level of connectedness to a community. The third is uh, contextual joy. So the idea that I liked coining that term. I love the idea of joy, but I do think sometimes there can be a context, contextual constraint. And so I said contextual joy for two reasons. One is the idea that we can find joy in any context. And so if you feel stuck, what are things you can do and can control to help yourself find more joy and be intentional about finding that joy? Or what are ways if you do have a level of autonomy or like individuality to be able to change? What are contexts that you can change? So again, for a teacher, being able to switch school districts or switch grade levels or switch content areas that you teach. But that also, that goes to any sort of individual working in an organization and wanting to switch context and be self-employed, right? Like that, that is contextual joy. I'm going to find more joy in this context if I do have the autonomy to switch. And then the fourth one is called the only option. The only option has a duality to it. Uh, the only option plays off of, you know, it doesn't follow the C thing. So we had to go with it. But the only option is either a desperation or like, well, this pays the bills, like a level of utility, right? Like this pays the bills. I've got a family to feed. It does pay pretty well, or it's paying me enough to get by. I get to go on my vacations. I get to pay my kids' colleges. Like there's just that, the, this is the only option. And I'm just kind of like, I'm this far into it. 
retirement system. So I need to stay in, right? Like that is real. And I think it's important to call that out if that's where you are. But then the other side of the only option that I think is really quite magical is the inspiration and uh, like the positive of like, I, this is the only, this is what I was meant to do. There's a callback to higher calling of like, this is what I was, there is nothing else. This is my only option because this is what I was meant to do. This is the people I'm supposed to serve. This is the work I'm meant to do in this world. This is how I'm supposed to contribute. This is a perfect combination of my skill set, my interests, my talents. This is the only option. And so really feeling gratified by that work. So those are the four mm. key takeaways. I do think they're really universal, even though I got them through the lens of a bunch of teachers who had stayed in their careers. And I'm just excited to continue to uh, engage conversation with organizations, school districts about what that means for them. I, I love it. I, I'm over here just like constantly just thinking every every one of those that you said on like contextual joy. Okay, how does how does that apply? And, and you break it down so smoothly. And so for everyone that's listening, like make sure to go grab a copy, Teacher Parents on on Amazon, wherever you can get it. Reach out to Jen. Um, but let's let's keep going here. Okay, you get ready. I remember this. You, you're getting ready for like when should you launch it, right? Then you decide. Okay, I'm launching it by this date, and you're committed. Talk to me about what's happened. You're, you've launched it for about a month now, okay? At the time of this recording, so it's still fresh. But what, what has already happened for you? What are you noticing? What's, what, how has this impacted your, your personal brand and, and business up to this point? So I, one of the things I love is that this, I, one of the, I truly genuinely love that this is not my full-time job, but this gets to be an extension of the work I do full-time. And so while the hustle is real of getting the word out, sharing it with others, it really is a labor of love. And I don't feel this level of pressure to like, I have to sell this many or anything like that. So I am really grateful that I have a great full-time job that I get to just continue doing and show up for every day. And then I just get to talk about this in the evenings, weekends, and if it comes up in the job, obviously. But I really have seen that I love doing these podcasts and being able to share about it with others. Um, and talk about the work. And really, I mean, gosh, could you believe this? Two weeks ago, I got to, I was flown out to Las Vegas and I was the keynote speaker at a national conference. And they let me have a book signing table and meet with the people who had attended the conference and sign that and share my book and sell it. And that was like a dream come true that I thought would happen 10 years down the road. And it happened within two weeks of launch. And we booked that during the process of writing. And I remember you saying, because I was open on when my launch day would be, I didn't have a defined time frame. But when I booked that conference, you were like, you are gonna be an author by the time that conference happens. And that really kickstarted like, okay, now I have a deadline and now I have a, you know, a really clear process of when I want to have that finished and it worked. And so being able to be at that conference and share the book and share the other book that came out of it and now being able to talk more to other groups and other organizations dreaming up how not only I can add value through speaking, but we can get that book in every conference attendees hands and we can um, do follow-up conversations through book studies or anything like that. You know, I've been speaking for about five years in the more professional space. So speaking has always come naturally. And that's something I've really honed over the years, speaking and performing. But the book just feels like a natural add-on to what I'm doing, where I can now add the add to the conversation. And for people who leave at a speech that I give, when they want something else, like, well, we want more. And now I'm like, I have it, right? I can give you this. Yeah. Like you've said before, it's like an easy, instead of giving the business card, you give the book. And so it's just an easy way to stay connected. They have my information all through the context of the work that I've poured myself into. And so I'm really excited of what's to come, but already so grateful for the last month and just personalization of like, I've heard from so many people from across the country that I haven't talked to in years and the amount of people that have come out of the woodwork through me posting on social media that are just like, I bought your book or I sent it to so-and-so, or I'm so proud of you, or I remember you when, and just those pieces has been really humbling of like, gosh, I feel so well supported by a community that has built me for all of these years, whether we stayed in touch or not. And that's been really, um, 
a really fun surprise. And next week I'm having my launch party. And so I'm very excited to have an in-person party with all these people now that I have yeah. both books off the ground. So that'll be a great little exclamation mark at the end of all of this. Yeah, it's it's amazing because I think back to, you know, when I was doing a lot of work in and speaking for the education, high school students, college students, leaders, educators. And and I remember that I, I, I would remember I, I get a I would get a gig earlier on. And then I would give my book out or the event would buy it or I would sell it in the back of the room. And then what started to happen after doing a couple of these was all those attendees had my book now on their desk. They had my book now that they actually read and they're like, oh, Jake, I want a hundred books for my school. Oh, Jake, I need it for my district. Can you actually kick off our entire year? Because we want to understand the principles and we want to give your book out to everyone. And so what's really amazing about what you're doing is you've been speaking for a while. You've leveraged that to, to, to now add the book to it. It's a natural add on. And what's going to happen here. If we, we do this a year from now, you're going to start to now book these speaking engagements as a natural flow while you're still working your full-time gig. And it's going to be not just a labor of love. It's going to be a freaking labor of incredible love that you're constantly smiling about because you're going to get to do the things that fill you up the most. And so I want to share that with people because, you know, wherever you're starting, whether you are already speaking or you want to speak more, a book just adds to the existing opportunities. A book continues that. And what I love too about your story and what's already happened is you booked the speaking gig before the book was done. Okay. And that's a huge opportunity that I think a lot of people leave on the table is, oh, I have to wait till my book's done. No book the gig in advance, then bust your butt to getting the book done by the time of that. And now you have a huge opportunity to get the book out there directly to your ideal audience. So I, I want to say kudos to you for taking advantage of that and, and making that happen. And then committing to the rest of that process to, to bang through and, and get the book done by that time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And being able to have that and that second book come out within two weeks of each other plus the conference it was all such a whirlwind very surreal but i'm very grateful to be on the other side of that now just enjoy the okay ride. you you now you teased it right there okay and and, and i want to talk about this so you mentioned oh and the second book came out talk to us about what happened as you were writing teacher Verens. talk to me about how you decided to while writing teacher Verens, you added the companion to it so that they would both be ready right around the same time. Talk to me about the thought process and, and what the difference is between the two and how you're able to do that. Sure. So in the fall, as I was writing, I started writing and really being in all in book mode in the summer into the fall. And I had a friend just kind of asking like, what's next? Like how cool that you're writing a book and what's next? And I said, well, already I have an idea because I'm writing, you clarify your audience when you write. I'm thinking about current teachers, mid-career teachers, maybe veteran but also anyone in the work industry that's feeling to, you know, like they want to give up or anything like that. And then I just thought of the future generation of teachers and I thought of kids and I thought, gosh, like, I wish there was like some sort of kid story about a kid who wants to be a teacher in this kind of world where teaching is seen a little differently now. It's not seen as immediately admirable and as it has been in the past, it's kind of like a, oh, good luck. I hope you're doing okay. And, um, and so I just kept thinking to my friend, I'm like, I'm thinking of this book for a kid who wants to be a teacher, but the adults are maybe saying they shouldn't, but I don't know the first thing about writing a book, much less a kid's book. And this friend just happened to say, I know an illustrator who is a preschool teacher. And that just, I met with that person on Zoom within a week. And the manuscript for that book was much less work than the manuscript for the nonfiction book. So I pulled the manuscript together pretty quickly and then just had the illustrator and preschool teacher work on it. Her name's Sarah. She was amazing. And she saw the vision and she got to work. And so we decided to partner together. I told her about the teacher Viren's book that I was doing. And I said, I want this to be a companion. I want it to look similar in style with colors. And I want it to come out around the same time. Here's the timeline. And she was like, yes to everything. So we did teacher veerance in a mid March. And then about two weeks later, we were able to do why teaching this little picture book right here. And we were able to get that out um, within 
two weeks later and I just got the bulk order of these uh, last weekend. So just in the last couple of days, I started getting those out to people and it turned out great. It really is a kid who wants to be a teacher, but the adults are saying to not do it and maybe giving them other options. Yeah. And they ultimately ask the kid, why are you so insistent? Like why teaching? They ask the kid that. And then the kid goes into narrative storytelling about the impact they have heard adults share about the teachers of their lives or yep. me, adults in their lives. So my mom always talks about her second grade teacher and my dad always talks about his third grade teacher. And like, I'm realizing that teachers have such an impact on all professions and all of society. And so that's why I want to be a teacher to have a similar impact on the generations to come. And then a fun side note is that all of the memories that are shared are actually my own. And so I'm giving, oh. credit, I'm giving credit to all of my teachers all, that I had and the district that I went to and uh, my own parents are referenced in the book who are both educators that I love. And so it was really fun to be able to honor all these people that built me as a true companion to this work and be able to have them out at the same time. It was a dream come true that I didn't even know I had until I started yeah. to and going. I, I think it's so cool because, you know, you, you start on teacher variants and you're just seeing what, why we always say it's bigger than a book, right? You're, you're seeing this, okay, this book is great, but you've landed speaking engagements. You've written a second companion book that, that came with it. You're living out a dream that you thought was 10 years in the future. That's now in the present. Like you're doing all these things. I think it's like, I think it's so freaking cool. And I, I also love how you kind of done it because every person who's listening to this can think of a teacher or five or even 10 from their time that have had both positive and probably negative experiences, right? <laughs> but we often all can remember a positive, a teacher who did something for us, right? Oh, my fifth grade teacher comes to my mind right away. My third grade teacher, my fourth grade math teacher, right? Like my high school, like all of these teachers, I could just vividly create great memories because of their impact on me. And I can't say that about a lot of other things that have happened, right? Like teachers really do play such a big role. So as, as, you, as you look ahead here, what, what do you, it, what are you ex most excited about? You got the teacher variance. You got why teaching. You're you're doing the damn thing. What's what do you see happening, and what do you want to to happen and moving forward? I am so excited to just continually step into these spaces that are seemingly coming to me, right? Like just continually saying yes to these opportunities that. Have, are finding me. And I really just am grateful to be able to be in a space where doors that I don't even know exist yet are starting to open. And so feeling like I can just continue to like, what I really want is a community of educators who are excited about the, what they're doing, but then a community of uh, supervisors and uh, CEOs who are also building into their employees in ways that add value and in ways that uh, really validate the work that they're doing. And I'm very excited to see not only where this book goes, but where future opportunities go to be able to speak in spaces and encourage and motivate and inspire to create an entire community of people who are doing work by saying the grass is not always greener on the other side. And yep. it's okay to persist. Like it really is a volatile job market and people are constantly switching. And there's nothing wrong with that innately. And sometimes that is the right move. I never want people to feel like they have to be stuck. But I also want to encourage the stay. And I want to encourage the idea of persevering through hard things and deciding what's worth it for you or where do you need to make the switch to then be able to persevere longer, right? What kind mm -hmm. of moves do you need to make? So as far as what's next, I, I mean, honestly, the book writing process was very life-giving. I don't leave burnt out or like a good riddance at all I leave very energized and I'm just like I want this for everyone and also I might want to do that again like I have so many it definitely yeah. kick-started all these other ideas especially seeing how accessible it is and really demystifying the process has helped me feel like oh I I can totally do this and or like you I want to bring others into this space and I want to encourage them that if you have an idea you can do this and yeah. I also I haven't even told you, but next week, uh, a friend of mine that I met through this process, I did not know her before, but uh, she's local here in our city. 
we're starting an authors and speakers collective is what we're calling it. And we're starting it here in our city and we're connecting with local authors or local aspiring authors and speakers or aspiring speakers to be able to really just pull together thought leaders from different industries all because of this process. And so oh, we're, amazing. We're, meeting is next week and I can't wait to share my journey and hopefully inspire other future authors if that's where they want to go. I love it. I love it. And I can't wait to, to hear how that goes. What, as we wrap up here, how can we follow you? How can we support you? How can we hire you to speak? How can we buy your book? Give us all the goods. Sure. Well, the book is on Amazon. So just, I always say, just search my name since I have both books out there. So, if, and teacher veerance obviously isn't a real word, so it's hard to remember, but just search my name, J-E-N-M-O-T-T, Jen Mott on Amazon, and both books will pop up. And then um, my website is my name, but doctor, so drjenmott.com, and people can go there. And then Instagram, I'm at j.mott, and I'm on Facebook under my own name. So I'm pretty easy to find with a quick Google search. And for speaking engagements, I'm happy to connect via my website or social media, and then obviously have lots of references to how you can connect with me in the book, just like you taught me. So uh, I would love to be able to chat with anyone and just engage in further conversation about what this work means for them. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Awesome. Well, thank you for being on here. It's been a, a pleasure to help you get to this point, but you've done such a great job of, of making the things you want, the ideas you have, and turn them into reality. And it's been a pleasure to be a small part of that process. And I, I'm grateful for you coming on here to, to chat with us um, today and to share your wisdom, share your knowledge, share your books with us and what's happening. So thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. I appreciate you, Jake. Awesome. And for everyone that just listened to this, uh, Jen's an amazing person, as you can tell, and so humble. And I'd encourage you to grab a copy of her book, Teacher Veerance, or even grab a second copy of Why Teaching. Now, my challenge to you, because we like to end every episode here with a challenge, is my challenge to you is to, is to evaluate, you know, and I'll use contextual joy, but you could take one of the four pillars, you could take Jen's journey, and you can say, you know what, where do I find joy? How can I find joy? In what context can I bring joy? Right? And that's my challenge to you is to, is to listen to these four pillars again, pick a pillar that you would like to improve and start taking action on that one step at a time is going to create a monumental difference. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Make sure that you grab a copy of Jen's book. Let her know that you enjoyed this episode and this interview, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.